Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise him. We are so excited to be in the house today. You know, in Psalms 122, I was reading it, and it said that he, we were glad when he said, let us come into the house of the Lord. And he also, he mentioned something else. He said, and as we were here standing inside your gates, O Jerusalem, Jerusalem is a well-built city, and its seamless walls cannot be breached. So as you walk into his house on today, there, these walls cannot be breached. We are in the presence of the Lord. So let's get excited on today as we praise and worship the Lord, as we come into his house, as we receive a powerful word, and as we remember him through our communion. So get your elements, get set today, and let's be joyful. We are in the house of the Lord, and there's going to be some moving, some shifting, some increase, some breakthroughs, some deliverance, and some special miracles and signs that we're going to receive from the Lord. So get yourselves ready. And we're going to hand it to the praise team and they're going to take us into another level of worship. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah is the highest praise. Hallelujah. We can give our Lord. And we lift up our voices. Hallelujah. We lift up ourselves to Him. And we want to give Him our best because we know that praise is coming. Hallelujah, for the upright. Hallelujah. Join in with us.
your high set free. It's free indeed. Hallelujah. We're free to worship Him, free to honor Him, free to praise Him, free to give unto Him. Hallelujah. Free to love on one another. We are free, and there's nothing, hallelujah, holding us back. Come on, put your hands together.
beauty. Amen for our vision confession. Amen. Let's give her a hand as she comes. Hallelujah.
so excited to talk about the Academy today. Um, we are preparing for our Academy presentation, and that is two weeks from this Sunday on December the 17th during service. And so I just want to first prep you for that. Um, it is something that we do each and every year with the children. We're getting ready to worship the Lord, to praise the Lord, and then we're also going to just reflect our knowledge of him and our love for him. So I just want to invite you all out. Make sure you bring your families to come on out. And this is fruit from the work that we all contribute to as we contribute in the academy. So I just want to uh, advise you of that and have you to mark your calendar, save the date for that. And then I also want to, I want to advise you about our campaign for the academy. And the ushers have these cards and they'll pass these out. If you were here for our Thanksgiving presentation, we were talking about the different things that we're getting ready to do in connection to the academy. And I just want to share that we're believing for $100,000 because we are moving into a new facility. We're preparing for that. Uh, we have outgrown, and you may have heard me say that each and every year, but uh, we are truthfully, we've outgrown the facility at where, that we're at, and we're so thankful for it. I mean, we've done so many great things. We're doing great things in that building, but it's time to move on to that next level. And we're enlisting your help. And so as we're reading, uh, we're going through this campaign, if everyone gets this card, I just want you to turn to the back where it says, join us in reaching our goal of $100,000. And if we can pull up 1 Corinthians 3, verse 9. And I'm going to, if you can work with me for just a moment, because I'm going to take you just on a little journey, because it's so near and dear to me. I'm going to first read this scripture, and then I want you, I'm going to have you flip over your card. Okay? And it says, for we are co-laborers in God's service. You are God's field, God's building. And Throughout this year, it has been eight years that this academy has been going strong. This is actually our eighth year. Amen. And I want you to flip over now to the other side, where there's pictures on this side. And this just shows you a glimpse of the lives that we've affected. These are not just pictures of just <laughs> different, you know, we're just pictures on the back of a flyer. This is lives that we've affected, and we still continue to maintain and go strong. When we first started with the academy, we had a after-school program. Then we had a small where we started off with just several students. It was eight, <coughs> uh, eight students. And then we started, we kept going, and we still kept on continuing with the vision <coughs> through summer programs, through spring break programs, through Christmas break programs. We also, not only uh, did we do that, we also had different things that we do throughout the school on how we affect the children's lives. And we partnered with many people throughout the community, <coughs> with Patterson Park, with Sportscom, different um, people and different agencies and people who God brought us in connection to. And so as you look at this, and he's building something towerly, and now we want to go to another level and another degree. So let's flip back over. And remember that it's all of us working together. And we're raising these funds for our new building for the next school year in order to do three main things. Facilitate larger student body, add additional staff and elective classes, and prepare for moving and overhead costs. Currently, I was talking to a family, um, and she was asking, I'm just thinking about what to do. And I was telling her, I said, if you could just pass this out to your coworkers, if you could just speak to them about this, even if you don't know, they can. And she actually said that she was going to see if her job can actually match with someone to the academy. And then not only that, we were just, and these are just some testimonies, because even though you may say, okay, I, right now I'm not in the position to do something like this right now, but you can put it in the hands of people who can. Because there are people who are wanting to give, give on behalf of something, a legacy that their family may have started. They may want to give on behalf of something they're standing and believing for their own children to have. 
So they're sowing seed in connection so that can manifest in their lives. And some people just want to see. They want to see the children, this next generation, affected and impacted. So sewing may be something that they're looking to do. And I know there's different things. They do diff different agencies and different places that people normally or naturally give to. But now we're, we're telling you that we have the academy within the ministry. And this is an outreach. This is an outreach that not just for uh, church members or those that are, I mean, we've affected people that have lived in Coffee County, people that have lived in Davison County, all over. And I just want you to just open up your hearts to think, to say, okay, this is something that you're sowing towards. So I'm not embarrassed to show, to, to give this to someone else, or I'm boldly following what God is showing me to do, to share this with someone else. We were taught, I was actually on a call and a family who comes and they clean the school once a week. And she happened to hear me on a phone call. And she waited and she came back and she said, I wasn't trying to listen to your phone call, but I wanted to just tell you, I heard you talking about the playground. And it was on her heart to purchase a playground with benches and, and so forth for the academy. The Lord, see, she keep put her in the right place at the right time. And so now our children, we have a playground at the school. And that's how fast things happen. So I'm just encouraging you to go ahead and get this flyer. Because some of you, your children may have been affected, or some of you, you may have participated in one of these programs. You may have been where we have ministered to your children, or a friend's children, or neighbor's children. And it's not just us having school or having aftercare programs, but it is impactful. I have seen children come out with talents and gifts, things that they didn't even know. I've seen children know more about God than they did before. I've seen children prepared to pray for their family, and I've seen the whole story. I've seen families actually at odds with one another, with court documents, and it changed. It brought love, and it brought unity in the house. So we are making impacts. And so you can help us to be a mail carrier, a town crier, and you can pass this out to someone else and let them know something that we're doing that's inside of your ministry, in your community that's making a difference. So if you can, go ahead and grab this flyer. And even if you just lay it, I, I was speaking to a, uh, a dentist yesterday, and I was believing for these flyers to be there. And you know her son who goes to our school, he said, well, we'll take care of his sister Brittany. We're going to do it. Just give us about, give us some so we can lay out. Give us some so that we can have. It's just spreading the news because there is someone or a family that God has called for us to impact. We're already impacting 30 upon 40 children each and every year. And there's more people that God is calling us to minister in this next generation academically and spiritually so that they can make an impact in this world for Jesus Christ. So I just ask you to take this and pray about it and ask the Lord, who can I give this to, to sow? Who can I leave this to? It may be a business owner. We've come in contact with people that said that we were led to serve you. We were led, that's how we're here today. We were led to do this, we were led to do that. People have came and decorated our school before, landscaped our school, they were led to do it. So you might be the conduit to help them to get to where God is calling them to be. So I just charge you and implore on you today to just pass this out. Just be led by the Lord to, uh, you know, invest it. Plant a seed in the ground by passing this out to someone. Take at least three and just ask the Lord, Lord, who can I bless? Or who can be a blessing to this ministry? Because it's all circulating back in the kingdom of God. Amen. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to welcome up Minister Kenya for the testimonies. Amen. Hallelujah. This is still the day the Lord has made. Amen. Hallelujah. And we're getting ready to rejoice and, and just share of the Lord's faithfulness. It's, it's one thing that, you know, we tell our testimony via text. We tell it on the conference call line. We tell it on Facebook. But it's something about standing in the house of the Lord amongst God's people and sharing.
declaring the faithfulness of God, how he has kept you, how he has sustained you, how he has blessed and provided for you, how he has kept you from evil. I've heard testimonies about new jobs, new careers, new homes, new cars, bodies being healed, and this is the time that we just want to stand and glorify our Heavenly Father. Remember, a testimony is a highlight. We want to hit those high points. And just encourage encourage one another. The word of God also says to rejoice with those who are rejoicing. Yes. Amen. Yes. Glory be to God. And then to know that in Ecclesiastes, I think it's chapter 3, well, it says there's a time and a purpose under heaven for every matter. So if we hadn't received ours yet, there is still yet an appointed time. Glory be to God for your, for your breakthrough, for your blood, whatever you believe in God for, there is yet an appointed time for every purpose and for every matter under the heaven. Who, under the heavens. Who wants to be the first to give God glory? God, Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Amen. Oh. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise, praise, praise the Lord. Praise, praise, praise. Hallelujah. I just want to testify to strengthen other people, you know. Hallelujah. Especially when you are very worried. The Bible says, even your worriness will not add a little to you. Rather, it will make you to be depressed. You know? So don't just be worried. You know, we are, we, are, we are humans, so you might be worried about something. But if you're sitting down there, don't always forget. So that's what I always remind myself about. That I'm not ordinary. Yeah. You know, at times you just feel you're ordinary and then, you know, you just like, oh, it's not going to happen. There is something just telling me, you worry too much. You know, two testimonies. The one was about the key. <laughs> I had this key for over eight, nine years, you know, at work. It's my, my key at work. So suddenly I, I didn't find it. I'm like, what? I've had this key for nine years. So I went to the office and told everybody that my key is missing. Ah, they were there, like, really? They were going to help me, they called the, the, the HRO, they called everybody, the secretary went everywhere, they ransacked the whole office. And I like, I ransacked my whole car everywhere. I said, this key, I've had this key for nine years. Two days worry. I tried to go and do the key again, it's hundred dollars, that's nothing. But I said, no, I cannot have a key for eight, nine years. And it's just missing. You know, then the Holy Ghost reminded me, so I prayed. I said, oh, that's, that's exactly what I've not done. I spoke in tongues. Mm. I went back home. The Holy Ghost directed me to somewhere in my closet. And the king was just sitting there laughing. He said, I've been here. You didn't tell the Lord. You are just born. And when I got the key, I started speaking in tongues. <laughs> I said, God, it was only when I talked and I lean on you that I received it. Amen. So I tell you, if you worry too much, that worry will not bring that into you. Amen. The only way you can have that breakthrough is to just remove your mind. Oh. It doesn't matter. The miracle will happen. Say amen. 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 The, the second one, sorry, I will round up. It's about my exam, my board exam. You know, we do exam every ten years. Do one and then very big eight hours, nine hours. You're, you're just sitting down on the computer. All the questions <laughs> coming from right and left, eight hours or nine hours of exam. It can be very telling on your skin, right? So again, you have to prepare. And maybe you are so busy, like we. With every, you're so busy, you don't even have any time to study. But if you don't study for that exam, you, you, you're not going to pass. That's just the truth. <laughs> Because it's everywhere. It's everywhere. So when I just said, God, you take control. You know, I was busy, seeing patients, doing a lot of things. I just had a little hard time. And I went to that exam. And I oh, thank you, Lord. You know, you know. And then the rest was, you know. And my wife said, your result is out. I said, what, is, what was it? He said, well, I don't know. So you have to log on to the website. And when I did, it was glorious. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So I have another, another 10 years to do. 
feel like I would have retired there. <laughs> But it doesn't matter, but you see, don't be, don't be afraid, don't be worried. The Lord is on his throne and he's going to make you laugh. And you're going to keep giving him the glory, the praise, and the adoration in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord. I know, uh, glory be to God. We got some Sister Lawanda came back for children. Were you in children's ministry? I'm going to let you jump up here first and then um, Sister Melanie and Sister Tawana. Praise God, amen. amen. Um, just a quick testimony on Sunday, coming from Nashville, a deer came out of nowhere and hit my car. I was hurt, I was confused, I was like, God, why? I didn't want a car note. I said, this is not the right time. So, of course, I cried and wished it was different, and I had to repent after the message on Tuesday. So I prayed about it, God gave me instructions on Monday morning. So I hit her there on Monday, I mean on Sunday, and Monday morning I went, Monday afternoon I went about the 2024 Toyota. Y'all's mission was different, and I thank God for that message, it was just for me. Then I thought about increase. Uh, Tuesday I make one year at the VA, and I go up to a step two, so that's a raise. And being the first of you, I get another way. And I just thank God for, for being on beauty and work, walking in the word. Amen. 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 Glory to God. Hallelujah. Come on, sisters. Amen. Praise the Lord. Oh, my God. Amen. I don't even know where to start. My heart is so full. And I'm speaking for both of us. She a little bit up in the wood, right? But, Lord, it has been a long, 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 long time coming. We have waited. We have wanted a food trailer for so long. We spent so much money. We bought two used ones and just poured money into them, just trying to get them to where they should be to pass inspection. And it was just a money pit because we were trying to do it on our own. Yeah. And so we prayed, Lord. You said you would give us desi the desires of our heart. And so I just prayed and I asked God, which, what, what, what do we need to do? <laughs> September 21st, we went and picked up a brand new 2023 14 foot food truck. Yeah. Yeah. Put it upon one of our, my co-workers' hearts. 
Um, she has many followers, I think, on TikTok, and she told them that I do my lesson plan on my phone. So her people came together and got me a new laptop. Hallelujah. And then I'm just thanking God because in the faith, I have truly launched my, uh, my events decorating business. So come see me. Hallelujah.
and James? Come with Deacon James. And this will be our, our last one if no one else has anything. Woo. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, saints. Uh, as many of you know, at my place of work, uh, when I got that job, I was away for five years from my family. I was commuting between here and Memphis every week. And uh, I just came back to be with my family in 2021, July. But recently, due to changes that are happening in the global economic uh, environment, uh, so many things happening at so many companies, uh, our company decided to shut down one of our stations, which is at uh, uh, LAX, which is Los Angeles Inter International Airport. And all those people were offered the opportunity to move to other stations. And this move was going to be accomplished through seniority. So if you're high in seniority, you can move somebody that is below you. So in the process of that, um, I got bumped out of Nashville and was going to be moved to Indianapolis or wherever else I can move somebody else with my own seniority. So one day I was going to work and my manager calls me just as I leave my house and tells me, hey James, uh, somebody's bumped you out of Nashville and uh, you know the process, let me know what you what you, where you want to go. And the first thought was, all right, what do I do? But the Spirit of the Lord spoke to me and told me, just turn it over to me. So I just prayed in the Spirit and I told God, let your will be done. You brought me here for a reason. You will keep me here for a reason. You will also keep me here for as long as you want. He calls me 30 minutes later before I even get to work and he tells me, well, I've got good news for you. <laughs> um, I've spoken to my managing, my senior manager and my managing director and they're agreed that we keep you at the station. We only need our vice president to agree to it. So I went to work and I'm speaking in tongues and I'm praying. And I get to work, and about an hour later, he calls me and tells me, well, you're staying. He told me I'm staying for now, but he told me we have six rounds of bumping. This is just round two. So if somebody else comes and bumps you, you'll be gone. Because we are only allowed one and that was you and that's how you stayed so i told my wife about it and she's so concerned about it she worried about it but i said you know what god brought us here for a reason he'll do his thing so we went through so many rounds of bumping and eventually the process ended and i was not bumped <laughs> Friday night, not this last Friday, but the previous Friday, and I found somebody just taking their sweet time on the one of the lanes, so I decided to move over. But as I was moving over, there was a tire right there, and it destroyed part of my, my bumper on the front, and I was so concerned, I was like, okay, we just replaced this bumper not too long ago, what do I do now? Insurance is going to count these against me. But we prayed about it and we let insurance know. And on Monday night, after we let them know in the morning, they say, Well, you're not liable for this, we'll take care of it. We need our own investigation. And we concluded you are not at fault. So this should not come against you. Celebrate the Lord. Lord Praise God. God. Well, I can't tell my husband to go back. So come on, no, come on brother. I'm going to testify anyway. <laughs> <laughs>
Good morning, abundant life. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Well, I've been on a journey, y'all, a health journey. But uh, these testimonies have inspired me so much. Amen. Amen. Uh, the sisters, uh, Sister Kawana and her sister, and when they, you know, they're in expectation. And, that, and that's what I'm, I'm in. I'm in expectation. You know, we've been hearing this word about Jesus only. Yeah. Jesus only. Yeah. Man, I like to say that when I, you know, when I go see these medical people, you know, they, they say, well, why come this and how come that? I can say, Jesus only. <laughs> so I just want y'all to know that God is keeping me. They, they gave me a death sentence at the first of the year. I'm, I, I'm not dead. I'm up here with this microphone in my hand. Jesus is keeping me. Be in expectation, y'all. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. So we just give God all the glory and the praise for every testimony that was told, those that weren't told, and those that are yet to come. God be praised. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So we want to just... Uh, Today, 
Otherwise, when you have eaten and are satisfied, and have built good houses and lived in them, and when your herds and flocks multiply, and your silver and gold multiply, and all that you have increases, then your heart becomes lifted up by self-conceit and arrogance, and you will forget the Lord your God who brought you from the land of Egypt out of the house of slavery. He led you through the great and terrible wilderness with his fiery serpents and scorpions and thirsty ground where there was no water. It was he who brought you water out of the flinty rock. He fed you manna. Let me jump down to verse 17. Otherwise, you may say in your heart, my power and the strength of my hand made me this well. But you shall remember with profound respect the Lord your God, for it is he, for it is he who has given you power to make wealth, that he may confirm his covenant, which he swore and solemnly promised to your fathers, as it is this day. So God's people, they were about to enter into a new season from wilderness to promised land. But first he humbled him, and they had to be taught to look to him only. Hallelujah. They had to be taught to depend on him only. And for 40 years he kept them. He sustained them. He didn't let their clothes wear out. He didn't let their shoes wear out. He gave them food to eat. He said, I fed you, I protected you, but now you're going to a place where there is no lack. He said, I'm increasing you. Remember where you've been and how I kept you. And don't forget the Lord your God. You know, while we enjoy the blessings of the Lord, do not forget the Lord, your God. He, he, and give him the credit. Give him the praise. And I just want to say that the Lord has this for us also. It's a, it's a pattern. But, but God is increasing his people. He's taking us into a land of, of plenty, a time of, of plenty, a place of increase. But he had to prove us first to make sure that we understand when the blessings come in, that you live by, not by bread alone, but by every word, by every word that comes from God's mouth. So he doesn't want us worshiping the stuff. He wants us to remember that it is he that gave us this power to get well. Hallelujah. And so at this time of giving, I like to think of the first day of the week, this sun, you know, on Sunday, as an opportunity to return thanks to the Lord for all that he had done the previous week. We come in the house of the Lord returning thanks to him for providing for us, for prospering us. And you do that by bringing your tithes and you get your offerings into the storehouse. We come to his house to return thanks to him the first day of the week. Amen. And so he says in Proverbs, Verse 3 9. Honor the Lord from your wealth and with the first and best part of all your income. That's God's word translation. Honor the Lord with your wealth and with the first and best part of all your income. And so, again, as the Lord increases us, we have to remember to favor his righteous causes. Glory be to God. As the Lord increases, blesses, prospers us, breaks out on us, we heard houses, businesses, new jobs. God has done it, hallelujah, and will continue to do it. But we cannot forget it was the Lord our God who has given us power to get wealth. And so we don't come to his house long faced when it's time to give. We come celebrate because we remember that it was the Lord our God. It will know no lack. It will know no insult. 
favor. Hallelujah. Amen. I'm so grateful and thankful for all of the awesome testimonies. Amen. He is so awesome. God is so good. Amen. If you want to continue our worship unto the King of glory. Hallelujah. We want to honor him. Continue to honor him. Continue to thank him. Continue to magnify him. Continue to lift him up. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. For who is this King of glory? The Lord of hosts. He is the King of glory. Hallelujah. Yes, the world will bow down and say you are God. Every man will bow down and say you are King. So let's start right now. Why would we wait? Yeah. 
He's here in the midst of us. The Bible says we're two or more gathered together in his name. There he is in the midst of us. Glory to God, the one who saved, delivers, and sets free. Oh, glory. He's in the midst of us today. Amen. And he informs us of what he's in the midst of us to do. The Bible says in 1 John 3, verse 8, For this cause was the Son of God manifested, that he might destroy the works of the devil. Whatever working of the devil that's at work in your life comes to an end today. Amen. Jesus Christ brings it to an end today. You're going free from all afflictions and oppressions of Satan today. For the Son of God is present today to liberate you, to set you free. The Bible says whom the Son set free is free indeed. And where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. So you're free today from all satanic oppression, all satanic affliction in the name of Jesus Christ. and Jesus' activity in your life. Let the Bible do it. The Bible says in Philippians 1 verse 6 that he who begins a good work in us, a good work of salvation, a good work of sanctification, a good work of healing, deliverance, prosperity, and breakthrough. Amen. Glory be to God. Family reconciliation. Amen. He who began these good works in you, he's here to perfect it, improve it, make it better, and complete it on today. So whatever good work, amen, that needs to be perfected, improved, and completed, Jesus is here to do it today. Somebody give him a praise. Oh, we thank you. Take your life over there. Oh, we thank you, Lord. Oh, we praise the Lord. Glory be to God. Amen. Praise Amen. the Lord. Glory be to God. Amen. Amen. It's so good to be in the presence of the Lord. Amen. Amongst the people of God. I want to appreciate all of you for coming out today. Amen. We're going to hear and receive from the Lord. Discover what he called us to do and get equipped to do it. Amen. Our life is going to be more than better because we made an appointment. We made our appointment with the place that we have been appointed to. Amen. Glory be to God. All right. Let's give our praise to the man of hands to you. Hallelujah. All our ladies and members. And amen. We appreciate you, our friends and partners of the ministry. You may be seated in the presence of of the Lord. This Sunday is our communion Sunday, so we're going to encounter the Lord, amen, for the communion ministry. So, uh, amen, we are, we are do that at the end of the service, amen, glory to God, praise the Lord, amen, so good to see Brother Wesley here, his father and pastor, amen, hallelujah, amen, his, his father and pastors in, in Nashville and in Haiti. Amen. They have a church, a school there. Amen. Uh, uh, before you leave, Pastor, get, get with Sister Brittany and uh, just share a little bit about what, what you're doing there in Haiti. And, amen. We, we want to get on board with you. Amen. We used to, uh, we, we, we support and, and help a ministry there, but amen, since you've been so close to us, we might as well bring you in too. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. We're partners together in this endeavor. Amen. Glory to God. So good to see my sister back from Caddy, right? Caddy. Amen. She's back from Caddy. Amen. Glory to God. And so, how long are you going to be here with us this time? The end of January. The end of January. Glory to God. The Lord is going to perfect some things. You're going to receive this new prophetic word from 2024 to carry back to Caddy with you. Oh, the Lord got a word for 2024. Ooh, glory be to God. We're going to go into this new year riding on the way, y'all. Amen. Glory to God. I mean, he hit me about, about two months ago. It just hit me. And you know, I just, uh, you know, let it sit there and simmer a little bit. 
And boy, I'm telling you, that thing turned into a blaze about two weeks ago. I said, oh, that's 2024 right there. Amen. So we're going to release that word, amen, at our New Year's Eve service. Amen. Also good to see Pastor Booker, my friend, amen, and his family back here. Amen. Oh, God. They preach the gospel down there in Cincinnati. The Cincinnati, praise the Lord. So good to have you and your family with us today. Amen. Good to see all y'all, amen, here, our family, amen, friends of the ministry, love, one, partners, amen, glory to God. Well, those testimonies were awesome, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. Woo, man, I almost ran around the church about three times. Amen. I had put my seatbelt on, for real, Sister Mary, I had I had, to, I had to lock myself down because, man, if they would have told one more testimony, amen, I probably would have ran around the church, then ran around the parking lot, and then ran all the way home, amen. <laughs> and y'all would have had to have somebody else to preach today, amen. <laughs> Woo, boy, it's only so many of them you can take, amen. <laughs> oh, glory be to God. Amen, amen. But testimonies are important, amen. Testimonies are proof, evidence that you've been with Jesus. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. If you ain't got a testimony, you ain't been with Jesus. Mm -hmm. Amen. Glory to God. Because everybody that been with Jesus left there with a testimony. Amen. Amen. The Bible even talks about that. Amen. Glory to God. In, uh, in Acts chapter 4, verse 13, the Bible says, even though they were ignorant and unlearned men, they took notice that they had been with Jesus. Mm -hmm. Can anybody see that you don't been with Jesus? Mm -hmm. Glory to God. Mm -hmm. Your testimonies are proof, evidence that you have been with Jesus. Hallelujah. Your testimony is proof and evidence that you already overcame the devil. Mm -hmm. Glory to God. Revelation chapter 12 verse 11 says, Amen. We have overcame the devil by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. Yes, Lord. Amen. Glory to God. See, Jesus, he needs your testimony. I said he needs your testimony because your testimony is, is, is his witness to his love for you. Amen. And his faithfulness to you. His, your testimony indicates that you are under his care. Woo, glory to God. Are y'all seeing this? So your testimony indicates to others that you that he cares for you, that he loves you, and that he's faithful to you. Woo, glory to God. I just saw that while they were sharing the testimony. The Lord says, this is a, an expression, an indication. This is proof, amen, that I care for them, that I love them, amen, and that I'm faithful to them. Mm, glory. Mm, glory to God. No wonder Hebrews 10, verse 23, it says, hold fast to the profession of your faith without wavering. Why? Because he's faithful that promise. Oh, well, glory to God. Your testimony is an expression of his faithfulness to you. Oh, glory to God. And people need to hear that. I said people need to hear that. I said people need to hear that. Glory be to God. Amen. Your testimony preserves God's voice to others. Oh, glory to God. I say this a it's a it's a perseverance of his voice to others. Woo, it's a deposit in the future. Woo, glory to God. It helps others, amen, to refer to him, to come to him, to believe him. Woo, glory be to God. The best, amen, portion on the best aspect of testimonies, amen, is that it gives God a voice to others. Oh, glory to God. It, it, it makes him essential to others. Oh, glory be to God. Amen. And I asked the Lord, I said, uh, Lord, uh, Lord, show me this, how your testimony helped others to come to you. And the Lord showed me, he said, uh, look there in, uh, in Luke chapter 5, let's pick it up in verse 12. This was a leper. Amen. And he had come to Jesus. Amen. For help. And he came to pass and he was in a certain city. Behold, a man full of leprosy who seeing Jesus fell on his face and besought him saying, Lord, if thou will, thou can make me clean. See, he know he had the ability to do it, but what he needed to know what will he do it. Right. See, we know God have the ability to save, heal, deliver, and set us free, but will he use his ability on our behalf? That's what we need to know. Because whatever he's willing to do, that's what he's ready to do. 
<laughs> so the man, he knew that God could do it, but what he didn't know was what he do. Well, once you find out what he's willing to do, you don't even need to pray no more. You can just thank him. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. Amen. He said, if thou will, you can make me clean. Next verse. Amen. And he put forth his hand and touched him, saying, what? I will. Jesus always say I will to you. Amen. To something that he promised you. I'm providing for you. Amen. Glory to God. I will. He said, be thou clean. And he needed me. But let us see the party from him. Amen. See, the reason why a lot of things don't happen for us immediately is because we don't get in the word to find out what the Lord is willing to do in that particular area. Mm. Glory to God. Because once you see what he's willing to do, that's what he's ready to do, wanting to do. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Amen. And once his leprosy saw what he was willing to do, amen. Glory to God. He was ready to receive. And immediately, well, glory to God. Once you saw that the Lord was willing to save you, what happened immediately? You got saved. Well, once you see that the Lord is willing to heal you, who can stop him Amen. except you? Amen. Oh, glory be to God. Amen. The Bible says, Amen. The two came up together unless they agree. Amen. We agree on his ability, but do we agree on his willingness? Well, the Lord heals some, but he don't heal others. Wait a minute. Amen. The Bible says in Hebrews 13, 8, that he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. How often he's the same? Yesterday, today, and forever. Look there in Matthew chapter 12. Look at verse 15. Let's see who he's willing to heal. Amen. But Jesus knew it. He withdrew himself, and great multitudes followed him, and he healed who? Just Paul. Paul. Who did he heal? Oh. All of them. Woo! And he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Yes, and if he, he said, I will to this leper, what is he saying to you? Woo! Glory be to God. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. The devil can't stop him from healing you. You're the only one that can stop him. Because he's willing and ready to do it. Woo! Matter of fact, God anointed him to do it. Sent him to do it. Amen. Look that with me to Acts 10, verse 38. How God anointed Jesus with the Holy Ghost and with power, who went about doing good and healing. All. And healing. All. See, look how many times he put all in it. See, every time you come to God, every time you come to the Father, every time you come to Jesus, every time you come to the Holy Ghost, it's always all. Woo, glory. Amen. So the responsibility is up on us, not him. Because he's already telling us what he's willing to do. <clears throat> well, if he's willing to heal me, why ain't I healed? I'm going to show you why. Three reasons. Number one, amen, you ain't hearing right. Amen. That's why he said, take heed what you hear, take heed how you hear. Amen. Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. What you mean, I'm hearing the word, reading the word? Well, let me show you how to hear right, okay? 1 Thessalonians 2, verse 13. Notice what Paul said in 1 Thessalonians 2, verse 13. For this cause we thank God without ceasing, because when you received the word of God, you heard of us. You received it not as the word of man. See, quit hearing it like your preacher talking to you. Quit hearing it like some man talking to you. And start hearing it like it's God talking to you. And then it's going to work effectively in you. Amen. Are you serious yes. today? Amen. I said, are you serious yes, today? Amen. Amen. It ain't the preacher laying hands on me, anointing me with oil. If he's doing it in the name of the Lord, it's Jesus. That's right. That's right. What if you saw Jesus anoint you with oil? Jesus laying hands on you. Jesus saying, be healed. Be whole. Be well. Oh, yeah. Thank you, Lord. That's when it's going to work effectively. Amen. Amen. Because you're not hearing the word as though it's coming from man. You hear it as though it's coming from God. And then when you hear it as though it's coming from God, it works effectively in you. Amen. Are you seeing this? Amen. Secondly, you got to hear the word of God. Amen. Without protest, argument. 
and without wishing it was different. James chapter 1, verse 21. It says, receive with meekness the engrafted word. It's got God engrafted in it. Jesus engrafted. The Holy Ghost, the power of God, it's already engrafted in it. But it's how you hear it that determine if these engraftments get in you. Amen. Hear the word with meekness, the engrafted word of God, which is able to save your soul. What is that word meekness? The word meekness means without protest, without argument, and without wishing it was different. Oh, glory, the rich young ruler. What shall I do to be saved? Jesus said, go sell all you have, give it to the poor. Amen. And he went away sorrowfully. See, he didn't hear the word without protest, argument, and wishing it was different. Why? And the word didn't work in him. It didn't produce its effects in his life. Are you seeing this today? Amen. Amen. So when you hear what Jesus said, you can't have no more protest. You can't have no more argument. You can't wish it was different. If you do, you ain't hearing it right. Oh, glory. So it can't work in you. Amen. Number two, you don't mix. Number three, you, you have to mix faith with the word. You have to have confidence in what Jesus said and what he's willing to do. Look that with me to Hebrews 4. Look at verse 2. He said, the gospel that was preached unto us was preached unto them. But the word did not profit them. Why? Because they didn't mix faith. In those that heard it. Are you seeing this? Anything that you don't mix faith with, it don't matter how powerful it is. It doesn't matter if it's the Word of God. It doesn't matter if it's in the Bible. If you don't mix faith with it, it's not going to profit you. Wow. Are you seeing this today? Amen. Woo! Glory be to God. This is why people don't receive. Are you seeing this? Amen. I said, Are y'all seeing this? Yes, amen. amen. So if we can get these things dealt with, amen, we can receive. Oh, glory to God. Because the word doesn't return to him for it. It accomplishes that which he sent it to do. Oh, glory to God. But I got to hear it right. Amen. I said I have to hear it right. I have to hear this word without protest, argument, and without wishing it was different. I have to mix faith with it. Amen. I got to hear it as though it's coming from God. Amen. Another reason people don't receive. Amen. Look that with me if you would to Hebrews chapter 11. Let's pick it up in verse 35. Some people want to go on to heaven. Amen. They, they just don't. They refuse to do deliverance. I hear that. They just say, they want to go on to go. Amen. And we can't keep them here if they want to go on to go. Amen. The Bible says women received their dead, raised to life again, and others who were tortured, not accepting deliverance. See, deliverance was offered to yes. them, but they didn't accept it. Yes. They said, man, we want to go on on the other side. They like Paul, they were straight between two, having the desire to be with the Lord, which is far better, to live as Christ and to die as gain. Are y'all seeing this today? So they didn't even accept deliverance, even though it was offered to them. Are y'all seeing this? Yeah. Amen. See, we got to fix these reasons that, that, that indicate to us why we ain't receiving. Amen. Amen. Because if you don't fix the reasons why you ain't receiving, you, you, I'm telling you, you'll get discouraged. Yeah. And, you, and, it's, and if you stay discouraged, you'll get offended. Yeah. And when you get offended, it's hard to win you. Proverbs 18, 19 says, Brother hard offended is harder to be worn than taking the balls off the castle. So if you don't fix it in the discouraging realm, then you're going to go to the uh, offended realm, and it's going to be harder to win. That's what happened to John the Baptist in, in Matthew chapter 11. Amen. Look there in Matthew chapter 11. Pick it up in verse 1. The Bible talks about John the Baptist. Amen. And it came to pass, Jesus made the end of his commandment, and, uh, and the twelve disciples departed and teach in their cities. Verse 2. Amen. And when John had heard in prison, where was he at? Prison. He was in prison. He was in a challenge. He was in the test and the trial. When he had heard in prison that Jesus, notice, what did he hear while he was in prison? What did he hear? The works of Christ. He heard about the works of Christ. What kind of works? He went about healing all that was oppressed of the devil. He heard about the works. Right? And how does faith come? By healing. But how did he, notice he said, take heed how you hear. 
And how did he tell us to heal? Without protest, argument, and without wishing it was different. Right? He told us to hear the word like it's coming from God and not from man. Didn't he? He told us to mix faith and confidence with what he heard. Right? So, so Jesus is telling him what to hear, what to listen to. Amen? What do we expect? Amen? And he sent two of his disciples to remind him that these works are still going forth. Why? Because I'm the same yesterday, today, and forever. Yes. Glory to God. Now watch what happened after John the Baptist heard this. Verse 3. Amen. And he said unto him, he sent them disciples to ask Jesus. I think he done heard about the works of God. Are y'all seeing this? That, that, that if this man who announced Jesus' ministry to the world, if he can get in person, if he can get discouraged, if he can get offended, then what about you? This man saw Jesus with his own eyes. And he's discouraged and he's offended. Are you still in this? I said, right, but your offense and your discouragement ain't going to change Jesus. But Jesus will change your discouragement and offense. But it's contingent upon how you hear. Because he ain't going to say nothing different to you. He's going to keep telling you who he is, what he did, what he said. That's all he's going to tell you. Who he is, what he did, what he said. Who he is, what he did, what he said. And when you pray to the Father, he's going to tell you who Jesus is, what he did, what he said. Yeah. We'll cover the God, and that ain't going to change. Yeah. Woo, but he can change us. Mm -hmm. We'll cover the God. Watch this. Notice, he said to them, are you the one that should come? Or do we look for it? I don't know. Are you going to look for another? you the one who baptized the man. <laughs> look at what offense will do to you. Look at what discouragement will do to you. It'll make you even question Jesus, the Bible, what the Holy Spirit even told you. Yep. I mean, it can get you to looking for another. When well, there's only one truth way in life. Whew. Are y'all seeing the trickery, the deception of the enemy here? Amen. See, unless you settle these reasons that you're not receiving from God, you can get just like him. Religious, traditional. Just come to church out of habit, routine. Pray out of habit, routine. Read the Bible out of habit, routine. No expression that you've been with Jesus in your life. Amen. 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 I don't know about you. I want a Jesus to do something. Amen. 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 Woo! I need something done, but I need something done. Amen. <laughs> Woo! When do you need something done? When you need something done. Come to God. Hallelujah. Hey, come on with me, God. Yeah. We got a Jesus to do something. We got a Jesus that's ready to save, ready to heal, ready to deliver, ready to set free. If you don't fix it, it'll leave you to offense. And when you get offended, you talk like this. What's the use of praying? What's the use of going to church? What's the use of reading the Bible anymore? What's the use of tithing and giving offering and serving the Lord? So you're talking out of your offense. You're offended now. Amen. Glory be to God. And you gotta, you gotta see that's what happened to Esau. Esau. Esau, listen to me, he was the brother of Jacob. He had an inheritance, and he sold his inheritance, his birthright, for a bowl of soup. Yeah. For a bowl of soup, man. Yeah. Think about this. He didn't even see the value of a birthright in him. The Bible says he got where he despised it. Where he despised his own birthright. Don't you know if that boy can get to the place where he despised his own birthright, how much more can you? He had to let that happen. Glory to God. And that's what happened. When you get offended, amen, you, you, he got in a test. He became hungry one day. What is that, Genesis? What is that, 20, 
25, 39, somewhere over there. Amen. This boy got hungry one day. He got so hungry. Amen. That, that he came in, he was so hungry, couldn't even wait. Impatient. Amen. And, 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 and him, Jacob feels he done, he, he, he out of that birthright. He see that boy, he, he despising it. Amen. Glory to God. He said, man, I'm I value that birthright. He said, if he don't want it, amen, glory to God, I'll take it. Hallelujah. Amen. So I'm going with that birthright. Amen. Hallelujah. That birthright connect God to you. That's who I'm going to need. Amen. Glory be to God. And so Jacob said, hey, if I give you some of this food, will you give me your birthright? And look at this boy, Jacob. He gave Esau bread and pottage and living, and he did eat and rose up and went his way. And Esau despised his birthright. Yeah. How in the world can you get to a place where you despise your inheritance? Mm -hmm. Glory to God. Offensive, it'll work so many tricks on your mind, yeah, yeah, on your yeah, heart, yeah, on your yeah, perception, yeah. on your value of things. Yeah. Man, when you get offended, it's the most wickedest thing that can happen. Yeah. 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 Woo, glory to God. Yeah. And what get Christians offended is, 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 is when they need a reaction and response from God and don't get it. Amen. See, offense work in close relationships. Yeah. Oh, y'all just get that. Get, just get that revelation. Yeah. It don't work among strangers. Yeah. You forgive them and, you know, you say, hey, you know. The close relationships, when you call somebody and you need help from them, and you know they can help you and they tell you they ain't going to help you, don't get that. Come on. Come on, somebody. See, you got to guard against that. Yeah. I know, I've been there before, boy, when you know you have so many challenges, persecution yeah. coming from every corner. Yeah. Amen. And you you need, you want people to, amen. Yeah. Uh -huh. And they ain't there. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. And the one that are there, the only thing they can do is pray. But I thank God for them, because that's how we got through. But you're looking at their pocketbook instead of their relationship with God. You can do more with them than them other people who got the stuff who ain't calling you. Woo! Glory be to God. Amen. David didn't get offended when he looked at Goliath. Amen. He said, look, you know, he come out to me with the spirit, but I got the name of the Lord. I got more with me than he's doing here. Even his brothers turned against him and said, who is you? You're going to come on this battlefield. You little naughty rascal. You get back and watch them sheep that your father left you on. David said, no, it's a cause. It's a reason I'm on this battlefield. Y'all ain't with me, but the Lord with me. <laughs> oh, be to God. See, when you get in the test and trial, and those who are close to you, they, they ain't so close, you see, and how they respond to you, they know you're going through a test, they ain't texting you back right away like they used to. Man, if you're on guard against offense, you will be like John the Baptist. Amen. Somebody need to hear this right here. Glory be to God. That's a word. I wasn't even going. I was thinking about that man on the legacy, you know. And we start looking at four reasons why people don't receive from the Lord. Amen. See, if you don't fix that, man, you're going to get offended at some point. Amen. If you don't start getting the reaction from Jesus, and, and if you don't see him validating the scriptures in your life, and you start having testimonies, man, you're going to be easily offended. Yes. Yes. If you don't fix that. Yes. Oh, man. Jesus made it impossible for you to question, amen, his willingness to do something. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. I think this is the, the, the most credible example of his love and commitment to me. Uh -huh. Is when the soldiers were taking him and put him on the cross. Uh -huh. 
And Peter, amen, took his sword out and chopped one of them in. And Jesus told Peter, he rebuked Peter, not the soldier. He said, boy, put your sword up. Amen. Whoever lived by the sword going to die by. And he took his ear and put it back up on his head yeah. and restored that boy. Yeah. And the Lord spoke to me. He said, if I had enough compassion to heal my enemy, yeah. don't I have something left to heal my friend and my sons and daughters? Matthew 11. 
Look at verse 2. Jesus told him that. He said, hey, go tell. He said, he said John sent two of his disciples. And he, they asked him, instead of him sending disciples to tell Jesus, thank you for reminding me that the works are still continuing. That you're still saving, delivering, and setting people free. Amen. Woo! Glory to God. Instead of him sending messages back to, to thank Jesus, amen, for the word that he sent to John. Woo! Glory to God. See, look how John hear this word. He hear it with protest, argument, and he hear it wishing it was different. Mm -hmm. Are you hearing it right? Are you seeing this? Before your test show up, or when you in the test, Jesus is going to keep giving you a word. That's his responsibility is to give you the word. It's your responsibility to hear and to believe it and receive it. Well, glory to God. Woo! Hallelujah. I said, I asked the Lord one time, Brother Andre, why should I believe your word? He said, for the three following reasons. Number one, it's creative. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He said, number two, amen, glory to God, because it's prophetic. Amen. It doesn't return to be void, but accomplishes that which I said it to do. And number three, amen, because it's everlasting. Yeah. Being born again, not a corruptible seed, but incorruptible, by the Word of God, which liveth and abideth forever. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my Word will remain forever. Amen. He said, you, you should hear it because you should believe it for them three reasons. It's creative and it creates solutions for you. Oh, 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 hallelujah. But it's how you hear it. He gave John the Baptist the word. And John the Baptist sent a word back to him. Are you the one to come or do we look for another? Watch Jesus' reaction. And Jesus answered and said unto them, Go show John again. Yeah. Woo, glory to God. Can you see this? Yeah. He wasn't talking soft either. Yeah. I say he wasn't talking soft. He talking in tone, in, in, in volumes like I'm talking. Go show John again. Yeah. I'm showing it once. Yeah. I'm going to tell him again the same thing. Uh -huh. Woo, glory. I ain't going to sympathize, amen, with his situation, with his circumstances, and what he's going through. When I'm giving him this word that can provide him a testimony and bring him through. Some are giving the same word. Well, glory to God. Like we praying some more going to change what he said when he already gave us a word. Amen. Ain't no sense of praying out there. He showed you what to do. Amen. What you going to pray for? Oh, glory to God. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. See this word, it'll try you. Yes, it in your test, in your trial, yeah. God going to give you a word. And that word going to try the condition of your heart. Yeah. Wow. Look at Psalms, what is that? Psalm 105, verse, verse uh, 19. I think it is. Verse 19. Here's Joseph. He is his brother that lied on him, put him in prison, threw him in the pit. Threw him in the pit. Powerful that lied on him. Amen. The wife that lied on him. And, and says she, he tried to rape him. And, 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 and they threw him in prison. You see what I'm saying? The butler, he done, he done told him if he helped him, he going to tell him and recommend that he get out. They didn't do that. He still in prison after all that service. After all that commitment to the Lord. After all that faithfulness. Amen. And watch what happened. The Bible said he didn't get free until the word of the Lord came and the word of the Lord did what? Tried him. Woo! Amen. And tried him to see if he was going to get offended. To see if he going to get discouraged. To see if he going to get bitter. Glory to God. And after that word saw he wasn't going to get bitter, offended, or discouraged, guess what? Man, he went to bed a prisoner. That's and the it. next day, Brother Wesley woke up a prince. Yeah. 
Amen. You can change that. Work with what you do have, and you got them, and they praying for 
you, standing with you, believing with you. He 
entered into, he left the ministry and entered into politics. It's all right to enter into politics if you call them. But he wasn't called them, so he entered into politics. He went and told the governor, hey, you ain't supposed to be with her, and he, she ain't supposed to be with you, and y'all ain't supposed to be doing that. And what happened? They locked him up. He was doing all right before he did that. The governor was scared of him. Huh? They wasn't bothering him. They said, man, we fear him. He's a holy man of God. Are you seeing this? But out of our fence, it had to misuse your calling, misuse your ministry, misuse your business, your office, your leadership position. It had to misuse and misrepresent that. Amen. Glory to God. And then he didn't recover from his offense and got his head cut. Man, pray God. Boy, this is a message for the church right now. Because we in the world, I'm telling you, glory to God. I'm telling you, if Jesus ain't only, if he's not your only savior, your only deliverer, your only healer, your only provider, I'm telling you, man, um, this world is so crazy that only Jesus can respond to it. Amen. And we got to look at reasons that's keeping us from receiving from him Amen. and get them dealt with. Because yeah. he is committed to save, heal, deliver, and set people free. Amen. He committed to do that. I said he's committed to do that. Amen. I said he's committed to do that. Why? Because he wants a testimony. Yeah. Woo, glory to God. Because your testimony indicates that you've been with him. That he cares for you, that he loves you, and that he's faithful to you. Woo, glory be to God. Hallelujah. Your children need to see God's love for you, God's faithfulness to you, and God's care for you. David knew how important this was. Where is it at, though? Psalm 78. Let's read a few verses. Psalm 78, and then we're going to receive communion. Psalm 78, starting verse 1. Amen. Notice what David said. Woo, glory to God. Amen. Psalm 78. Give ear, O oh my people. Look at that. Woo. He's telling us, hey man, y'all listen to this. Amen. <laughs> to my word. Incline your ear unto the words of my mouth. Glory. Hear these words like they coming from God himself. Amen. <laughs> Hear them without protest and without argument and without wishing them were different. Verse 2. Glory to God. I will open my mouth in a parable. I will utter dark sayings of old. Verse 3. Glory to God. Which have been heard and see your testimony is supposed to be heard and known. Your church is supposed to hear them, see them, and know them. They're supposed to know God's care for you, know God's love for you, and know God's faithfulness to you. Which have been heard and known and who told us? Our fathers. You need to be telling your children. Woo, glory to God. This is how you train them up in the way of the Lord. When they're old, they won't depart from God's care, God's love, and God's faithfulness. Woo, glory to God. Are you seeing this? He said, raise your children up in the admonition of the Lord. Amen. Ephesians 6, verse 3. Raise them up in the admonitions. Of, tell these testimonies to them. Next verse, verse 4. Glory to God. He said, we will not hide them. Woo, God's care, God's love, God's faithfulness for us. We will not hide them from our church. See, God's trying to get a voice in the future. Whoa. Hey, hey, hey. Come on, somebody. Glory to God. And then showing them to the generation to come. What are we going to show the generations to come? The praises of the Lord, His strength, and it is wonderful works that He has done. Glory. Stay on 
on Jesus' side. In how you think, what you say, and what you do. Amen. Oh, don't let nothing separate you from his love for you. Oh, glory to God. Let his love for you charm you into more than a conqueror. <laughs> oh, tell discouragement. I ain't going to let you separate from you, me from how he loved me on that cross. Oh, glory. He loved me on that cross when I was dead wrong. When I was his enemy, he gave himself to die for me. Now that I'm his friend, you think he's going to love me lesser? No, I ain't going to withhold no praise from him. I'm going to be like Jonah. Even though I made wrong choices and bad decisions, it ended up in the well belly. I'm, I'm going to offer up the sacrifice of praise. I'm going to thank the Lord for the faithfulness to me, his love for me, his care for me, and his well going to have to spit me out. Woo, this, this sickness is going to have to vomit me up. Ah, this disease is going to have to spit me out. Screw me out. Hallelujah. Oh, God. Amen. Yeah. Ain't no problem, no situation, no devil that can hold a praise of our thanksgiving. Hallelujah. Yeah. Woo, hallelujah. Jonah said, I ain't going to think about what I did wrong. I'm going to think about what Jesus is doing. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Jesus, come in my heart. 
Save me. I acknowledge my need for you. I repent of my sin. I ask you to forgive me. Wash me in your blood. I ask you to deliver me from all satanic oppression and affliction. I call upon your name and I receive you in my heart as my Lord and as my Savior. Thank you, Jesus, for saving me. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. If you pray, they pray, call the church or uh, see one of the ministers at the church. We have some material to get to you to help you along in your new journey, in your new life, in your new destiny. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. All right. We're going to receive communion today. Amen. Now, amen. The Bible tells us in John chapter 6, verse 53, Jesus said, Whosoever eateth of this bread and drink of my blood, he said, he dwelleth in me and I in him. And just as I live by the Father, so does he live by me who eateth my bread and drank of my blood. And the Lord spoke this to me. From this moment on, we will no longer live by our own means, our own supplies. But we will live by his means and his supplies. Oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. 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 We're living by the Father's supplies. Amen. And the Bible says in Philippians 4, verse 19, that my God supplies all of my needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Oh, glory to God. So this communion, amen, is going to connect us, amen, to his supplies. In Jesus' name, amen. we may minister to the people. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Glory be to God. Thank you, Master. Hallelujah. Glory be to God.
to be our advocate, to be our mediator, to be our intercessor in remembrance of you who were made to be our wisdom, our righteousness, our sanctifier and redeemer. In remembrance and acknowledgement of you, we take eat of your body. And this we do in remembrance of you. Let us take eat.
Don't let this word slip, y'all. Amen. This is a word for the times and days we're living in. Amen. This word is going to put distinction on you. Yeah. It's going to separate you from the world. We're going to still be in the world, but we ain't going to be of it. Amen. Hallelujah. We're not of it. It just simply means we don't depend on it for nothing. Jesus. Hallelujah. Yeah. Glory to God. Glory to Amen. God. Amen. He that's a friend of the world is a yeah. enemy yeah. of God. And this is the victory that overcomes the world. Yeah. Yeah. Hey. Amen. Glory to God. God against discouragement. God against offense. God against it. Amen. Glory to God. How do you do that? Psalms 119, verse 165. Great peace have they who love thy word and know nothing offend me. Nothing offend me. Because I'm a lover. I always will good to God and others. Glory to God. Can't be offended. How do I overcome discouragement? Amen. Psalms 42. Look at verse 5. Amen. This is how you overcome discouragement. All right. Psalms 42. Verse 5. Why art thou cast down, O my soul? Why art thou disquieted in me? You got to talk to your soul. Hey, you ain't supposed to be like that. You ain't supposed to be feeling like that. I ain't going to let you stay like that, fixated on your problems, what people are doing to you. Uh-uh. Amen. I'm going to tell my soul, hope thou in God. I'm going to tell my soul, I will praise him for the help of my countenance. Are you seeing this? Thanksgiving and praise overcomes discouragement. Amen. You don't need to pray when you're discouraged. You need to praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. So get this book, powerful book. It's in our word supply. We also have a book fellowship every Wednesday at 7 p.m. Amen. We have the book fellowship. Amen. Where we discuss it. What chapter are we on this week? We're on, it's 18. We're on 18. We only covered one last week. Okay, we're on 18. Yeah. Chapter 18 this week. Yeah. Amen. And we'll do a little uh, review for those of you who are just looking on. Amen. To get you caught up. And then we'll cover Chapter 18 this week. Amen. Book Fellowship. Don't forget to get your monthly bookmark. Amen. And if you haven't already got it, the Urshers will get you one. Uh, you can get a couple of them. Amen. I always get four or five of them because I pass them out to people. We read one chapter out of the Bible every day. Amen. Monday through Friday. Amen. Glory to God. And so you can get your monthly bookmark. It has the announcements on there. The corporate prayer settings on there. Amen. You can get involved. Also, we have uh, the Believer's Foundation class. It's on Saturdays. Now, Believer's Foundation, that's what it's designed to do, to strengthen us in the foundational principles of the gospel. And then sometimes we need to be re-strengthened in those principles. Amen. In the foundation of the gospel. Amen. So Believer's Foundation class every Saturday. Amen. You can just get that information off your monthly bookmark as well. Also, like Sister Brittany said, get a few of these Academy uh, uh, brochures to pass out. Amen. And to pray over. Amen. Well, it's been good today, hasn't it? Amen. I said it's been good. Amen. Don't forget don't forget to get a, a postcard of our December services. Amen. All of our midweek services are going to be held online until January the 4th. All right? Amen. And so make sure you get this so you can be aware and help people. Amen. Not show up at the building on Thursdays. All right? Amen. Because if you show up at the building on Thursdays, amen, the rock's going to cry. The rock's going to preach to you. Amen. Amen. Uh, not that you just want to come, you know, and, and, and cut your, cut your, uh, your Facebook page on and you can just listen to the service in front of the building. Amen. Glory to God. <laughs> Hallelujah.
had it good. Amen. But make sure you get, amen, the, the, month, the month, uh, monthly reminder of the services. Amen. Well, amen, all of our outreach ministries are well and, 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 and furbishing. Amen. The New York ministry, amen, they got testimonies, praise reports, all kind of things are happening there. And then the ministry in Atlanta, amen, is getting off to a good start. Amen. Glory to God. And so uh, you all just keep praying and believing and standing. Amen. Because we're populating heaven and depopulating hell. <laughs> Glory be to God. We're on a mission to redeem destinies from waste and decay. Amen. I just cover you right now with the blood of Jesus Christ. I decree, amen, right now that no weapon formed against you shall prosper. All of your children are taught of the Lord. Great is their peace. You are far from oppression, terror, and fear. It will not come near you. No weapon formed against you shall prosper. Every tongue that rises up against you in judgment shall be proved to be wrong. For this is your heritage. Your righteousness is of the Lord. And we're servants of the Most High God. And it's my prayer on your behalf that the Father's richest and best be 